Hello, hello. So today we are going to be talking about um, affirming language for gender expansive individuals. Hello, Marshawn. Um, so let's get started. So I am Paul. I am a social media specialist here at Women Walker, uh, and my pronouns are he, him, his. So during the past few months, Women Walkers. Community Health Department has expanded its outreach efforts to the social media platform. We cover various topics about HIV, SDI, sexual health practices, access to care, uh, social determinants of health, and general public health interventions. The next series of outreach sessions will focus on the current pandemic, COVID-19, and ways to manage your sexual, personal, and mental health. The community health team is here to educate and support you. So, as I said today, we're going to be talking about gender expansive um, individuals and affirming language. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. So, first off, I'm going to start by defining two important terms. Uh, the first is gender expansive. And according to PFLAG, gender expansive is an umbrella, umbrella term that is sometimes used to describe people who do not otherwise fit into um, gender norms, uh, societal gender norms, as well as um, identity beyond perceived gender norms. So some gender expansive individuals um, identify as no gender or a mix of genders or um, some also more binarily as a man or a woman. Gender expansive individuals might feel that um, they exist among genders on a spectrum or beyond the notion of um, a spectrum. So sometimes gender expansive individuals use gender neutral pronouns, but they might also um, use any pronouns. Some may be comfortable with their bodies as they are, regardless of how they express their gender. So the second um, definition I'll go into is affirm gender, um, which is defined as an individual's true gender as opposed to their gender assigned as birth. So this term should replace terms like new gender or chosen gender, which imply that an individual chooses their gender. So why do we need to use gender affir or affirming language so gender expansive language does not assume the gender or sexual orientation of its attendees readers or audience so without knowing the identities um orientations of a person using non-inclusive language can be alienating to uh, a lot of individuals who out uh, fall outside of the norm and it's dis discouraging for folks um, who are discovering and yet how, uh, who have yet to discover their own gender identity. It does also not only gets rid of a gender spectrum, but enforces uh, traditional gender roles. So I'm going to give a few examples of using affirming language for gender expansive individuals. First, um, according to the University of Maryland Baltimore College Guide to Inclusive and Affirming Language, the easiest way to know how to refer to someone is to ask how do they, um, how they refer to themselves as well as their pronouns. In modeling this behavior by first sharing your own pronouns uh, and creating an environment where people feel safe to share their pronouns uh, is very important. So the sig singular they is an acceptable form to use if you are unsure um, or you can use the person's name as a pronoun. 
It was important to note that in group settings, uh, to avoid, avoid singling people out, you should make this a commonplace habit that is part of regular introductions. So examples of using affirming language include, um, you want to use language that does not rely on gendered experiences. Um, for example, instead of saying ladies and gentlemen, you can just use folks, um, such as good morning folks. Instead of using a fireman, you can use firefighter, um, as people of all genders do that job. Instead of saying both genders or opposite sexes, you should say all genders, um, because saying both impro um, implies that there's only two uh, genders and not a whole spectrum. And instead of saying born female or born male, you can use the term assigned female at birth or AFAB as it's more accurate. Also, instead of saying a gay or a transgender, make sure to use gay or transgender as they are adjectives that describe a person. Oh, and also very importantly, if you, instead of saying transgender or, ooh, Yes, transgender and normal people, you should never say that. It's transgender and cisgender, as transgender people are normal. And saying that transgender uh, and normal people would be implying that transgender people are not normal. And finally, do not use the term it. Use they as referring to people and not things. For example, I am not sure how they identify. So I'm also going to talk about a few resources for so supporting gender expansive folks. So the first is Gender Diversity, which is genderdiversity.org. And they increase the awareness and understanding of the wide range of gender variations in children, adolescents, and adults by providing family support, building community, and increasing societal awareness, as well as improving the well-being for people of all gender identities and expression. The second would be the Gender Expansion Project, which is genderexpansionproject.org. And this is a Midwestern program which focuses on uh, promoting gender-inclusive education and awareness surrounding transgender, intersex, and transgender uh, gender diverse people. And finally, to learn more about all the terms that I've used today, as well as supporting um, and caring for our gender expansive people, there is the HRC, Human Rights Campaigns, um, Supporting and Caring for Our Gender Expansive Youth Report, which is a 925 uh, page gender expansive uh, youth report that is designed to provide adults with a better ex understanding of these youth as well as finding better ways um, to communicate with and support all youth in their lives. So I hope that you have learned a little bit more about affirming language for gender expansive individuals. Um, I don't see any questions in the comments, but if you do have any, let me know. Um, so if there are no more questions, before we go, I want to give you a few reminders about COVID-19 and the vaccines. So if you've already gotten vaccinated, congratulations. You've taken a very important step in preventing yourself, your loved ones, and your communities from illness. The Delta variant is still soaring across the United States at the moment, and it's totally understandable why you might want to keep wearing your mask, as the vaccine is not 100% effective. More contagious variants are spreading and there are still a few protocols in place to actually verify that individuals are um, staying safe and keeping vaccinated. So if you haven't been vaccinated and you're looking for an appointment, Whitman Walker still has COVID-19 vaccines available. For everybody ages 12 and up, you can receive the Pfizer vaccine and everybody ages 16 and up can receive the vaccine in general. So please reach out to us at 202-207-2480 to make an appointment. 
Um, and if you're having trouble making an appointment with us for DC residents, you can find information on the COVID-19 vaccine walk-up locations uh, and eligibility at vaccinate.dc.gov or by calling 1-888-363-1855-363. 3630333 For Maryland residents, learn more about the Maryland vaccine distrib- distribution process and schedule an appointment at covidlink.maryland.gov or by calling 855-634-6829. If you live in Prince George's County, you can visit their vaccination registration portal um, here. And if you live in Montgomery County, visit their vaccination registration portal or call 240-777-0311. And for Virginia residents, learn more about the Virginia Vaccine Distribution Project uh, process and schedule a vaccination appointment at vaccinate.dc.virginia.gov or by calling 877-829-4682. If you haven't been vaccinated uh, and you are not looking for an appointment, please continue to follow CDC guidelines for mask wearing, quarantine, social distancing, and the like. It's very important that you get the vaccine, discuss COVID precautionary measures with those around you, be mindful of masks, and keep your distance, especially when you do not know whether an individual has been vaccinated or not. So, tomorrow is our Walk to End HIV, Walk in 5K to End HIV. So, if you want to support Women Walker, register to walk, run, and donate in this year's virtual walk in 5k to end HIV tomorrow, Saturday, October 23rd. This year is marking a special year as it is the 35th anniversary of the walk. So register your team or yourself today at walk to end And remember to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Men Walker, as well as other, some of our other platforms at Real Talk DC, at The Corner DC, and at No Filter DC. So I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will see you later. Bye.